Good morning, Kingdom Saints. Good morning, viewers, subscribers. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> well, let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Um, recently, while evangelizing, I ran across a group of Hebrews they call themselves the Black Hebrew Israelites. Go figure where they got their name from. Anyway, they approached me while I was preaching. And they was giving me this rhetoric, this stuff that they made up. Because I know scriptures. The stuff that they made up. They, what they do is they're, they're like Satan. They take the truth and they twist it around to their liking. And God said, do not add or do not take out of his word. So I was up for the challenge. I asked them a lot of uh, questions and uh, I also hit them with scriptures. And when you come across a group like this, you have to be fully equipped fully equipped so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you scriptures for all you guys that want to know a countermeasure against their terrorism because that's what they do they terrorize people they uh, they resort to violence sometimes and they also use profanity which I was like these are supposed to be men of God, right? So-called men of God, and they use them profanity. And I'm, I'm like, what is going on with this? I mean, you know, I'm like, okay, this is not really a, a ministry. It's a cult. It's a cult. That's basically what it is. They're a cult, just like all these other cults out here. Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and the Catholics. But they're at the top. They're at the top because they resort to profanity and violence. I mean, I seen one video yesterday. Uh, who has it on his video? Oh, um, Vocab Malone. Look him up on YouTube. He has a video of them confronting a white man. The white man was just minding his own business, you know what I'm saying? But he did, he was questioning them and whatnot. And he was frontal. But they had no business poking him and hitting him with sticks and pushing him. And one guy swatted him one of the black Hebrew who I swatted him. Is this Christian values? Is is, is this god, godly behavior? Are they following Jesus or are they following the evil one? Go figure. So anyway, let's get to the scriptures. The first scripture, I hope you uh, write these down for when you run across anybody, not just them, but anybody who's uh, preaching the wrong doctrine. The first one is Romans 10, 9, that as thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou sh now this video might be kind of lengthy, so you can just stop, copy, fast forward, stop, copy, fast forward. And, um, yeah, because they believe that if he wasn't part of the slave trade, in other words, you have to be black, Hispanic, Native American in order to be saved. Now, tell me, where in scriptures does it say that? Stay, they, they live in the, in the Old Testament, in the Torah. They don't recognize that Jesus came not only to uh, 
Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And all we have to do is have faith. For by faith, for by grace you are saved through faith, not of your own works, so that no man may boast. Faith is all it takes to be saved. Faith in Jesus. Faith and belief, and you have to act on your belief. Okay, let's go to the second scripture. The second scripture is Romans 9.30. Romans 9.30 What shall we What shall we say then that the Gentiles was followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith Another thing that they don't believe they don't believe Gentiles have Salvation. They think that uh, salvation only applies to Israelites. And if you ask them, they don't even know if they're Israelites. They don't know. They can't trace their genealogy back. It's impossible. They can't trace their genealogy back to Abraham. And I guarantee you, 99.99.999.999% of them cannot do it. You gotta realize this, this is just a court that wants attention or they're so, they're so obsessed with their beliefs that they're using, that they're using it for their own agenda, their own agenda. And they're also they're very racist very racist they're totally against white people they call them Edom edomites edomites and and this one video that i told you about man they was calling this guy all kinds of names profanity and all kinds of names <clears throat> okay let's go to the next scripture acts 9 15. acts 9 15. Acts 9.15 But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. This uh, scripture applies to God appointing someone to bear witness before the Gentiles and to proclaim that they can be saved. The kings and the children of Israel and the Gentiles, this one, they hate, they hate these, these scriptures because that's the truth, but we see what they do is they twist it and they add to it. You know what I'm saying? They twist it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Acts 2.5 Acts 2.5 And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this when, now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these we speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own language wherein we were born? Here, here's a kicker. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and Pontius and Asia. 
Figlia, Pampif, Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome's Jews, and proselytes. A proselyte is a Gentile, non-Jewish, who converted to Judaism. That is a proselyte, and this is why they hate the scriptures. They hate the scripture. So it's Acts 2, 5, all the way to 2, 10. You can add 11 if you want to, to nail it shut. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. The wonderful works of God. Okay, let's go to the next one. Acts 16.30 Acts 16.30 And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. That means the family as well. The Gentile asked, what must I do to be saved? The Gentile, not an Israelite, so this proves that you don't have to be an Israelite to be saved because we're under the new covenant. Oh, that's another thing. They don't follow the New Testament. The new covenant we have with Jesus. They follow the Old Testament, the Torah, just like the 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 non-Messianic Jews in Israel, the non-Messianic Jews in Israel who live in the Torah, who live in the old days, who are trying to keep the law. We don't, we're not under the law anymore. We're not under the curse. But they believe we are. But when the Holy Spirit pours His flesh out on all nations, all people, sons and daughters, shall prophesy. They are going to come to the realization for conversion, conversing to Christianity. Okay, what's our next one? Our next one is Acts 26. Acts twenty six twenty nine. Acts twenty six twenty nine, and Paul said, "I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and all together such as I am, except the except these bonds." Here, Paul is talking to King Agrippa. Paul is talking to King Agrippa. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Here Paul purposely appealed to Caesar because he didn't want to be freed. He wanted to preach the gospel to King Agrippa because he desired that he be saved, that he become a Christian. So that's another fallacy that the black Hebrewites have about salvation is only applied to Israelites. That's, a, that's nonsensical. That will be, defeat the whole purpose of Jesus at the cross. Am I right about it? 
Okay, let's go to our next one. Esther 8, 17. Esther 8, 17. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land became Jews. Let me repeat that. And many of the people of the land became Jews. Scripture again. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them became, they became, which means they wasn't, became, they wasn't before, they became Jews. There you go. Hit them with that, hit them with the quickness. Let's go to our next scripture. Acts 10, 14. Acts 10, 14. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed that shall not call common, what God has cleansed, thou shalt not call common. <clears throat> In other words, we are all cleansed. God has cleansed us all. They hate this one too. Now let's go to the next one, which is Deuteronomy 23. Three. Deuteronomy 23. Let's start with three. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Ruth was a Moabite, and she told the Jews, Let your God be my God. I will put my faith in your God. 23, 4, Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they had they hired against the Balaam, the son of Beor, of Petor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Here it is. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Mm, mm, mm. This is good stuff, peoples. Let's go to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 1 to 21. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have, have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, would, which is given me to you, would. Notice here that he doesn't say, which is given me to it, the Israelites to you the Israelites or to you the Jews it says to you would you is a synonym which means everyone that's present or everyone that's reading you would how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, 
it's not really a mystery anymore to us, but it's still a mystery to these to this court because they don't know Jesus, which in other ages was not made unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now I want you to read this all the way to 21 and mark it down in your Bible <laughs> or put it in your track notes. Amen. Well, if I was made a minister according to the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power and to make all men see what is and to make all men see and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Another thing that they, they, they like to twist is in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. They like to twist it around and say, there is no Trinity. You know what I'm saying? They don't believe in the Trinity. Okay, let's get to Hebrews 8.8. 8. Hebrews 8, 8, for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, say it, the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be with, to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for he shall know me from the least to the greatest. In other words, God is saying here, because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not. So if we were still under the old law as the Hebrew Israelites claim, why would God say, because I continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my laws into their mind and write them. This is the revelation right here. Okay. This is just good stuff, spiritual food. Okay, let's go to, uh, oh, here's a good one. Galatians 3, 14. Galatians 3, 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now this right here should just nail everything to the wall. But you know what? They are so hard-headed. They still don't want to listen. But don't worry. We got more, don't we? We got a lot more. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit. 
through faith. Through faith. Through what? Through faith. Through what? Through faith. Faith is all you need to be saved. Amen. Okay, let's go to the next one. Zech Zechariah two eleven. Zechariah two eleven. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord. It doesn't say, and only Israel shall be joined to the Lord. It doesn't say, and only the Jewish nation. It says, and many nations. Really, all you need is those three words in that sentence right there. In that, in that scripture, I mean. In God's word, and many nations. Hmm. Like the uh, judge would say, case closed. Am I right about it? Okay, let's go to the next one there, peeps. Oh, yeah. Psalms 86 9. Psalms 86 9. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. All nations whom thou hast made, all nations whom thou hast made. The last time I checked, God made us here in the United States. Last time I checked, God made everybody in South America. Last time I checked, God made everybody in Europe. Last time I checked, God made everybody in, in Africa. You get the picture, right? All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, let's go to the next one. We we have a few left, but it's almost at the end. So just be patient with me there, boy. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1, 5. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Amen. Now the, the black Hebrew Israelites would say that this only applies to them, but that's not so. Here, Jeremiah, went out to prophesy, went out to preach the gospel to the sinners. And God told Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. But God being in omnipotent, omnipresent, this applies to all of us. This applies to all of us because the Lord has knew of us since before we were first formed in the womb. Am I right about it? Let's go to the next one here. Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24. 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then 
shall the end come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, not just the Israelites, all nations. <clears throat> Amen. Moving along, the next one on my list is Mark 13.10. I know I said Mark 13.10, but I like to start with Mark 13.9 and then go to 10. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Among all nations. Not just the Israelites. Not just the Jews. All nations, you heard? Okay, the next on our list is Luke 24:47. Luke 24:47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. It doesn't say and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among just the Israelites. It says among all nations starting at Jerusalem and Jesus went to Samaria. Jesus went to Decapolis. Jesus went to all these places and so shall we. Amen. Okay. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking with me this long. We're almost done. I have a few left and we'll be done. And you can go back to sleep or you can make your breakfast. Make me some bacon and eggs. I'll bring my big fork. No, just kidding. The next one is Romans 1 5. Romans 1 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name for obedience to the faith okay let's uh let's go to faith and all nations for obedience to the faith faith is what you need for salvation and that applies to all nations. Hmm. Yes. And we receive grace and apostleship because of faith. And this is everybody in all the nations. So this is basically saying if you have faith, no matter what nation you are from, you will receive grace and apostleship. Hmm, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out, does it? Go figure. Okay, the next one is Matthew 8, verse 10 and 12. Matthew 8, 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Hmm. This is the centurion that came to Jesus and wanted Jesus to heal his son. 
and the centurion told Jesus. No, Jesus told him to meet him there. The centurion said, I am in command of many troops. They bow to me. And the uh, uh, centurion said, you go, Jesus, you go. And Jesus said, I have not found. No, the centurion said, you go and I know he will be healed. And Jesus said, I have not found such a great thing. And this man was not even an Israelite. Was not even an Israelite. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. This is good stuff here. Let's go on to the next one. Romans 1. Romans 1, 2. Romans 1. I like to start at 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Mm hmm. Good stuff here, people. Good stuff. Don't let these false prophets, actually I call them demons, don't let them deceive you. Because they always do the, bait, the, the devil's bait and switch. Okay, let's go to the next one. We have one, two, three left. The next one is Job 2, 28. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. He was talking to man. Man. So if the Israelites are the only ones that are under the, that are uh, slated for salvation, why would God say, behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom to man? Why would he say that to mankind? Which means everybody. Last time I checked, mankind is the whole world. Am I right about it? Okay, let's go to the next to the last one, Romans 11. Romans 11, let's start at five, shall we? Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Now the Israelites will hear say that The remnant is the 144,000. And those are the elect. But the elect, here in this instance, is the election of grace. It's everybody. God gives grace to everybody who walks with Jesus and who walks in faith and who follows Jesus. And the remnant is the church, the remaining church that has not fallen away. The remaining church, that's the remnant here. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. For we are saved by grace through faith, not of our own works, so that no man may boast. And that's all they do is boast. And they also go to, scripture says, don't go with genealogies. 
They go with genealogies. They live in the genealogies of the flesh. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel had not obtained that which he seeketh her for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The elect have obtained grace because they walk in faith and they believe in the gospel of Jesus. The rest were blinded because they chose to walk in darkness. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this day. This describes these so-called Israelites. Amen. Okay, let's go to the very last one is Isaiah 56. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. It doesn't say keep my laws, it says keep ye judgment, keep ye judgment, which means be aware that you will face judgment. So if you be if you're aware that you will face judgment, you're gonna keep Jesus the two laws that we must follow. There's no other laws. It's only two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy strength with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And the second one is just as great as the first one. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Now you can go to Isaiah 56 one and go all the way down to say 5611, 5610. And that is just nailed it nail it to the coffin. That'll kit nail it to the coffin. That'll put the nails on the coffin is what I meant to say. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Amen. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Let me reiterate, let me repeat that. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Not just one set, not just one country, not just one race all people okay so in conclusion stay away from these black Hebrew Israelites and if you can don't let them confront you and try to trap you and if you don't know scriptures don't even bother with them because that they know the scriptures but they take the scriptures and twist it to their own liking and it's not serving the purpose of salvation. They only want to condemn. They don't preach salvation. They don't preach Jesus. But barely often would they preach Jesus. They mostly stick to the Torah, to the Old Testament. And they are also uh, just preach. I'm not going to call them racist, but to me, in my opinion, they are. They're racist. Because Jesus said, love everybody. They don't believe in that. Their main agenda is white people. 
which they called Edomites, and they called him the blue-eyed devil, and that's just one court on a very bad agenda. And the problem is they're just going and going. So don't confront them. Don't even engage with them if you don't know. If you're not biblically correct, don't engage with them because they will try to trap you. And they also are very dangerous. They're very dangerous. They're like a gang. You know what I'm saying? They got like a gang. They've been known to do beatings and violence against people. You know what I'm saying? Especially Christ other Christians. They don't like to be corrected. So, why waste it? You know what I do? I just ask them to move away so I can keep preaching the gospel. Just I don't care about them. I want to preach the gospel. I'm going to preach the gospel to the ones for all ears that can hear it, the truth. You feel me? All right, y'all have a blessed day. And we shall see each other again. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe right there. Thanks for watching.